Welcome to Sci-Fi Wire live from Emerald City Comic Con here in Seattle. We are getting down to the last few hours of this convention, and boy, do we have a wonderful, wonderful thing to do right now. I'm Andre Meadows. I'm the one of the hosts of Geekly, the Sci-Fi Wire series on Snapchat. My wonderful co-host Whitney Moore Hello. is here, and these people don't need no, need no introduction, but I'm just I'm so happy to have them both here. I'm sure you all have heard of the Back to the Future trilogy, right? <laughs> When we have Doc Brown and we have Biff himself, we have Christopher Lloyd and Tom Wilson from Back to the Future right Hello, here. People of the Emerald City Comic Con. <laughs> uh, is this live? Yeah. <laughs> These are now operational. <laughs> Well, thank you both for being here. I really do appreciate it. It's, it's been really cool to see see you guys at the cons and to also just see the the excitement and the energy from back for Back to the Future still to this day. Has that been a, a wonderful experience for you guys of just still having new generations, have people having nostalgia all about this this movie trilogy? Was that no. a question? Yeah, no. I, <laughs> I, it was just me kind of fan, fanning out as well as asking you like how you guys feel about just the energy about Back to the Future even to this present day. Well, how do you feel about being here, Chris? Um, <laughs> well, uh, I, I want to know if anybody here has not seen any of the Back to the Future films. Ray, we have oh. no one guy. Way we have over found back here. a victim. I mean, person. <laughs> Please move quickly and quietly to the nearest exit. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. After so many years, well, in 1985, Back to the Future 1, uh, the number one opened up, and it's like the opening never quit. It just keeps <laughs> playing. And uh, I guess what's particularly uh, gratified is how many people have come up and say that it, Back to the Future changed their lives, or they chose certain careers because of the influence of the movies, of, of the Back to the Future films, and um, that's great. Doc Brown has influenced many people into careers in science, architecture, uh, physics. En engineering, <laughs> medicine. Biff has yeah. inspired many mafia thugs, for example. <laughs> Many pro hockey players <laughs> who are basically enforcers, that sort of thing. So it warms the cockles of my heart. Yes. We, we've seen a growing resurgence of, of, of Biff sympathizers, though. We have seen it. People are like, you know what? Biff's not that bad of a guy. He's just misunderstood. No, Biff is that bad of a guy. <laughs> <laughs> so though, I should be careful when those I people think say that. Be, yes, <laughs> if people say, you know, Biff's not that bad of a guy, they're not very bright. Red <laughs> That's they a weren't huge really red flag. paying close attention <laughs> because he's supposed to be bad. He is bad, and uh, that that was the idea yes. for the story. <laughs> okay, so I gotta get some new friends. That's what I just found yes, out right that's now. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, but did you did you have this feeling when you were making this movie? Did you feel like, oh, we're on to something here? Like this is going to be a thing that is going to be talked about for years and years to come, or was it just? I uh, I really. Didn't get that in. I wasn't that confident about it because you don't know. You know, film may feel good while it's shooting and then, you know, collapse in the theaters. But um, I mean, I just wanted to see it have a good opening, and then it just never stopped, <laughs> never quit. I so. was very confident of my part in it. I thought Chris was a weak link, <laughs> but. We overcame it. No, um, actually, I think, well, it had gone through many problems. Uh, the star was replaced in the movie. It went sort of longer than we had anticipated and stuff. So, really, you're not very sure. Is this thing, when it comes together, is it really good? And a friend of mine, there's a thing called a Walla group in movie making, where you've made the movie, but you need, in all of the scenes, you need all of the little, the people talking at a restaurant. My friend was the voice of the dispatcher on the tow truck that, that takes George McFly's car in. They just need somebody to go, you know, 10 4, but to take the car, whatever. So my friend was in a Walla group. Well, the Walla people are in this group and they get to watch the movie 
before anybody else. So my friend called me at my house. He had seen the movie piece by piece. He called me and said, you know, this thing is really good. I mean, really good. I said, oh, well, that's, that's terrific. But, but the word started spreading really kind of person by person. I mean, Los Angeles is a, it's a company town. You know, it's, a, it's an industry town. So everyone starts to hear, I think this thing is better than anybody thinks. Because Goonies was the big movie. Yeah. Right. That was the Amblin Entertainment, Steven Spielberg company. Goonies had waterfalls, pirate ships, <laughs> His all kinds of things. They got their jackets at the end of the movie with leather, Letterman <laughs> jackets, leather. Back to the Future was this little movie about a car that had kind of problems, but it's a time machine car. We got these cheapo windbreakers. Remember the little yeah. blue? We got these blue windbreakers, like here, $4 windbreaker. Huh? Thanks for being in it. Um, but then the summer started coming, and they screened it. At that point, they had to screen movies for the theater owners to see how many theaters the theater owners wanted to put the movie in. How good's the movie? How excited are the theater owners? They had a screening. They weren't ready. It was a rough cut. They showed it for the theater owners, and the theater owners went crazy. Went crazy. So this thing is fantastic. And then, uh, you know, the tsunami of Back to the Future was starting to build. Like, maybe this thing is really big. Yeah.